So Preston, we just got the news that, well, the news that everyone's been wanting, you have been wanting. Breaking news, breaking news. <sighs> I will try to put some red arrows no. and circles on this video. This video is dubbed out. Oh my uh, god. But oh the, my god. Dunkin' Egg, everyone's been asking for Dunkin' Egg. You have mm. been, and mm. you, everyone. You know, it's it's pretty great news. It's pretty great news because it's like, it's such a good, it's such a good story. I'd love to see it adapted. It's pretty exciting. This is not like Fire and Blood. Like, Fire and Blood came out okay, like, pretty good, considering that the source material is not that great. Like, this source material is excellent. Excellent. So, like, I'm just really looking forward to seeing uh, it put to screen, if possible. Yeah, you know? Hopefully it's put to screen well, you know? Uh, by the way, I just wanted to let you guys know... Um... A friend of the channel, Miss Amber from The Road to Tarvalon, she recently made a pretty excellent video about the summary and why Duncan Egg would make a great adaptation. It's called The Night of the Second Kingdoms, would make a great HBO adaptation. I'll leave the link in the description below. Definitely check it out and please send her my regards if you do check it out. But uh, you have been saying for a long time that Duncan Egg is argu arguably a better story than Ice and Fire. Yes, yeah, certainly, certainly word for word, you know, and, and there's conclusions to each of the stories, um, unlike with Ice and Fire. I mean, obviously, Ice and Fire is long and rich and there's so much to it. So obviously, I like Ice and Fire more. But Dunkin Egg, you know, word, if, if you're talking like you take the same number of chapters, the same number of pages. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a much they're They're much better. They're much better. Like a, a Dunkin Egg story is going to be better than 99 percent of of ice and fire chapters for example mm. or you know so it's um yeah any of any of the duncan egg stories are better than than all like you know I, I maybe if i excluded my top five ice and fire chapters but i would put all the duncan egg stories like above nearly everything else like they're very they're they're excellent excellent stories um i, I and, have to be uh, a stickler for one second i I'm, I'm gonna channel my inner seinfeld a little bit i hate the name yeah I hate the name they've they've chosen because I get it. Oh, for the show. For the show. So, so this is the thing: is the news the news is that the show is going to be called A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms: Colon the Hedge Knight, and then maybe when they move on to the second season, it'll be A Knight of the Sec uh, Knight of the Seven Kingdoms: Colon the Sworn Sword, mm -hmm. A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms: Colon the Mystery Knight. Right, but the um, actual the actual uh, title is HBO original Game of Thrones: A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, the Hedge Knight. Do we really like? I, I understand if you have to put like Game of Thrones at the very top. That's fine, but I don't think, and this is me being a stickler. I don't think regular audience members, you know, the the major than eighty percent of people who watch the shows, I don't think they know or yeah. care what a hedge knight is. Um, it's self-explanatory, but at the same time, you do kind of have to look it up. Like, what is a hedge knight really? Like, is it just a guy that sleeps under hedges? Yes. But I think a, a shorter title will be better because audiences still know what the Seven Kingdoms are. They still know that. And if you put the Game of yeah. Thrones, like, a little bit on the title, like they do for House of the Dragon, I think they'll get the picture. Right. I mean, this this whole thing, it's going to be really long, right? This is going to be like Star Wars colon episode one, The Phantom Menace. Like, like it just goes on and on. It's going to be Game of Thrones, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, colon The Hedge Knight. Like, it's just like, come on. Like, <laughs> um, it's going to be that, yeah? Uh, also, I never liked A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms as a title for the, even the entire series. Mm. I think that... Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's uh, I don't think it's right. Well, like, well, first of all, like the whole thing about the story is that you aren't actually sure if Dunk is a knight, and it's not really just about Dunk. It's it's about Egg just as much it is as it is about Dunk. So like, and obviously like Dunk and Egg, like those are some silly sounding names. I get it, um, but uh, I don't like a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. I think it's a little too. Um, it, you know, I don't know. It sounds, it's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, the fan service in season eight where they knight Brienne. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think that episode is called a Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. It is. Um, it, it, the point of Ice and Fire is talking about how, how these stories like honor and knighthood are actually not great things. Like, you know, it's turning it on its head. Once you sort of examine what knighthood is and what traditional senses of honor are, 
once you examine those things, they're not great. And so what I didn't like about that episode, you know, was you're giving into it at the end. Like, Brienne gets everything she wants. She becomes a knight. Hooray! But the story is about how knights aren't necessarily good people. There's lots of people that aren't great knights. I mean, the mountain was a knight, you know, knighted by Rhaegar Targaryen himself. Mm -hmm. And he's the worst human being in the entire story, (laughs) right? So it's... it's, um, you know, I, so I, I never, I never liked that. I never liked the, uh, the the celebration of what it was to be a, to be a knight. I never liked that title. I'm also so. wondering if they're going to somehow try to tie this to Brienne because there, there's a huge sure. theory in the community that Brienne is a descendant of Sir Duncan. So I do wonder if like something like that is gonna is gonna go down. But the pa- the par- the parallel is that Brienne is not a knight, and the and and Dunk is not a knight. That's the secret. The whole secret. I mean, they, you have to read between the lines in in the in the story. But mm-hmm. Dunk is not a knight, and that's what's so funny and ironic about it is that you know, um, his he's he's a, he's a really good person. He's actually he's he's a better person than most knights, you know. And uh, and so that's what's funny is that he's not a knight, but he's but he's more knightly or he's better. He's more moral than than these supposedly honorable characters. Do you think it should have just but, been called Duncan Egg or the Hedge Knight? I would have been fine with it, the whole thing being called the Hedge Knight. Just like, you know, the, the A Song of Ice and Fire, Fire series, the whole thing was called Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is just the first... A Game of Thrones is just the first book, but Game of Thrones still fits the entire story. It's the same with the Hedge Knight. I mean, the maybe the Hedge Knight wouldn't fit Dunk's entire life, but it certainly fits the first three stories. He's a hedge knight in those first three stories. Um, you know, he doesn't become something beyond that um, until you know he's until later. So yeah, you know, I think I think you could have just called. I would have preferred they just called it the hedge knight. The whole thing, really, the hedge knight, because. Because I, I yeah. kind of do want, in, on one hand, I hate how long the title is, but on the other hand, I do like how season one will probably be The Hedge Knight, and then season two, The Sworn Sword, and mm-hmm. then season three. What's the third one? It's not She-Wolves. It's The, mis- the Mystery Knight. There it the is. Mystery Knight. So. Yeah. And then the far, I mean, the fourth one, even though The She-Wolves of Winterfell is not the official title, but but it's what everyone calls it, because, uh, because it's the only kind of hint that George has given about the topic in general um rather than like you know it doesn't follow the pattern of of a knight but or or dunk's job but yeah well and, and by the way uh, dunk not being a knight uh, to be fair he does dunk claims that he was knighted before uh arlen mm-hmm. passed away could it could it have been done off screen like off like you know well the the idea the idea is this is george so he doesn't t- he doesn't give you a definitive answer mm-hmm. he likes the mystery right? right but the idea is that every when when dunk talks about being a knight his ears blush you know every time he claims he's he's a knight mm. and so the idea is that he's lying and that's why his ears are blushing Preston, you can't you can't sit there and tell me the one of the legendary Lord Commanders of the King's Guard is not even a fucking knight. He's just a guy. You can't tell me this. Well, what's what's <laughs> what's kind of not, what's what's kind of funny about it is is people people wonder because there's these like lines of knighthood, right? And so one could kind of say, well, we don't know actually who Aegon the Fifth was was knighted by. But let's assume that it was Dunk, and then you kind of go, well, who knighted, who did, who did um, Egg like end up knighting? And you can kind of go down like these chains, and it, I, I think it may be Barristan Selmy was knighted by, was Barristan Selmy knighted by, by Egg, and so I'm trying to think, um, Prince Duncan took pity on the. Um, and Ben received, yeah, so Barristan Selmy was knighted by Egg. So there's kind of this idea that um, Barristan Selmy's not really a real knight because Egg wasn't a real knight, and because 
because Dunk wasn't a real knight, <laughs> and that this this this, this incredible knight Barrison Selmy is not a real knight because the chain of knighthood was 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 off. However, one could also say, well, it doesn't matter because Egg was king, and a king can knight people, and it's like, ah, okay, fair enough. So, I mean, so that fun little theory about like um, Barrison Selmy not being a real knight because the chain of knighthood is 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 bogus. Mm-hmm. It's really fun, but at the same time, if Aegon the Fifth is a king, I, I suppose it's fine that he can knight people too. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but come on, you think they're gonna focus that hard on the fact that Dunk is not really a knight? Kind of, not really. I'm, I'm first of all, I think they're going to completely miss that Dunk is not a knight. <laughs> you think you think Arlen's going to knight him? I think they're probably going to do some sort of flashback and show Arlen knighting him. I'm sh- I, like, I think they're going to miss that aspect of it. Well, I was going to ask you if, if they're going. Do you think they're going to actually give us like full ten episodes, or maybe short it down to six? Um, and there, do you think they're going? Do you think we're going to meet Egg in like the first season, or it's going to be a majority of it just Dunk and Sir Arlen? So Arlen Pennytree does not appear in the stories he's he's the background of stuff that happened Mm. earlier you know he's so and egg egg does appear in the first story and the 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 entire purpose of the first story is real of the hedge knight is to is about the meeting of of duncan egg so egg is definitely going to be in there um uh so the um uh the, the the first story of the hedge knight essentially being about a a tourney that dunk wants to attend and then he gets into some trouble because he defends this really tall girl who's a a puppet a puppeteer Mm -hmm. and he gets he gets in some real trouble with the um with the royal family and uh and so it's how he gets out of that trouble and meanwhile he's befriended this little boy and, right, but how um, many episodes do you think then, that could take up? Maybe three? Because they probably want to milk this for as many episodes as they can possibly get. Even though we meet Egg in like the very first story, I was wondering if they're going to try to stretch it out to where it'll be like Sir Duncan and Arlen's adventures for like the first couple of episodes, and then we are introduced to Egg towards the very end. Obviously, that would require a lot of filler, because, you know, like you said, Arlen is... Yeah. Um, but... It would help them stretch out the series yeah. more. I could look. I I could see. I could see one doing it in four episodes. I could see one doing it in six episodes. It it would be really difficult, I think, to extend out that story past six episodes. But you know, they they might be able to do it as some sort of like mini movie of of like four episodes or something. It would be really difficult. You know, they and they could just do it as a movie, like a two-hour movie. I'd be down for that, yeah. It would be difficult, yeah. Like, I mean, you could really, like, even if you really tried, you could extend it out. But it, it's, uh, it would be tough. It would be really tough. Because there's only, there's only a couple moments of climax in the story. Like, there's only a couple moments of action in the story. And so there's there's one fight in the middle, and then... And then there's the the big the big rumble at the end, and just in that sense, there's not enough like climaxes to to extend it out to multiple episodes. But but I could see like I could I could see them doing, you know, either a movie a two or, or like four episodes or something. Maybe you know at most six episodes. It would be very very. I mean, if they would be they would have to fill it with other stuff if they were going to like other characters, Blackfire Rebellion stuff like B plots if if they're going to extend it out more than more than four episodes four to six episodes I can yeah. see them doing the sh- uh, at least six six hopefully six episodes if not more because of what you said during your video about season 2 of House of the Dragon only having eight episodes because the way what you yeah. said in that video uh, correct me if I'm wrong maybe I'm misremembering is that HBO was probably going to have it start at the very beginning of July or August that way like you know mm. the eight episodes can take up like yeah. your subscriptions or maybe uh, in the middle of August that way it goes into October just so you, you keep those three months of HBO Max subscription yeah yeah um I mean, they could also have like you know the first season be both the Hedge Knight and the Sworn Sword, and then do the Mystery Knight and some other story, 
you know, in the second season. I'm not, I'm not sure. We, we, we know nothing at this point, but what it does see, what it does look like is that they are going full steam ahead with game of Thrones cinematic universe. But, um, you know, I, they, they, you know, they're going, well, I wouldn't say good full steam ahead because full steam ahead would have been more episodes of house of the dragon and such. But I think they're, you know, they're, they're trying all these different properties out and, um, um, and you know, we're going to be, we're going to maybe see a, a few more of these, um, but you know, this is our, our third one that we're going to get. I mean, and that's the thing is they ordered a full season. It wasn't like a pilot. They ordered a full season, much like they did with house of the mm-hmm. dragon. It, it's not like blood moon. The, for those of you who don't remember, it's not like uh, the blood white moon. walker prequel. It's not like blood moon. It's not even, it's, it's not even like game of thrones. I mean, game of thrones had a, had a pilot. So, um, they ordered a full, they ordered a full, a f- full season. I don't know if you know what a, what a season is, right? Because uh, I'm trying to think of like, like something like Chernobyl. Was that only six episodes or something? I mean, they do, um, you know, HBO does do like short little miniseries too. That know? used to be. This is something I remember Phil saying like a couple years back. Like when did when did miniseries become such a bad word? Because HBO hasn't done <laughs> a miniseries yeah. in quite some time. Chernobyl, of course, but they used to do it like all the time back in the day. Not as much anymore. Yeah, people. I mean, they were kind of fun. They were fun little events. I mean, even though people trash the um, the It miniseries that appear on ABC, like. We all like people all remember it. It was it was an event. So like for instance, Chernobyl was five five episodes, you know. So they, they do this sort of thing. HBO does do this sort of thing. Well, HBO so. went like oh. all in today, uh, April twelfth, uh, uh, with their announcements. Not only are we getting the Hedge Knight, we're also getting Harry Potter. We're getting uh, oh yeah, I, let's destroy that IP. <laughs> <laughs> J.K. Rowling like, is going to be executive producing it, so it's going to be. More f- nice. supposedly, it's gonna be more nice. faithful to the books than the movies were. The movies like weren't that unfaithful. It wasn't like season, like what five unfaithful. Right. Like it was pretty faithful. You know, yeah, they take out some plots, but it's a fucking movie. It can't be like thirteen hours long. Let's be honest for a minute here. But I was gonna, I was gonna say yeah, to you, yeah. like, hey, does your wife know about it? Bring her in so we can hear her reaction. Because almost every single person I know who's a Harry Potter fan, their reaction was like, why? We have the movies. They were perfect. We don't yeah. need this. But people running out of See, ideas. Is, that's 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 kind of the the the. There is a weird thing. There, there's one thing when, when you reboot something that was only done kind of half-assed before or not so great before. But then occasionally something is done really well and, and the fandom is happy with it. Um, I, 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 you know, I checked out the Reddits and bulletin boards on, on His Dark Materials. The His Dark Material fans were like, wow, they pulled it off. This was great. Like, we are very happy. Um, I'm trying to think of something something else where people were really like quite happy. I mean, Lord of the Rings, people forget that like when Lord of the Rings came out, there were quite a few complainers. I think the complainers like have disappeared over time and there's like more nostalgia love for the Lord of the Rings movies now. Um, even you know, even though they're pretty well received, and so when when they announced another series, everybody was like, "Oh no!" Like, but we just had something that was good. Um, I think when when the Dark Knight came out, people were upset about the return of the Joker because the last Joker was Jack Nicholson, and he was you know everyone loved Jack Nicholson as the Joker, and they're like, "How do you how do you improve on Jack Nicholson as the Joker?" And then Heath Ledger came in and was like, uh, "Yeah, I, I I'm gonna fucking nail it." And everybody's like, oh, my God, can anybody be better than Heath Ledger as the Joker? And, you know, we haven't had that. Well, you know, I guess some people, I guess um, Joaquin Phoenix was pretty well received. That movie was well received. So we've had so many Jokers now. So, um, yeah, the, the Harry Potter movies, like people liked them. No one thought them were. No, I, I don't know any Harry Potter fan that thought they were disastrous. You have to be, like, a super, super purist to, like, hate the Harry Potter films. I know some people – I put up a poll 
several months, maybe a year back, about when did Game of Thrones yeah. fall off for you? When did Game of Thrones start getting bad? Mm. And I put like, you know, season six, five, four, three, and I even put season two yeah. on there. Like my, my opinion is season my opinion is season four, you see the cracks. You see the cracks and then but the season You see the cracks and then season five it all falls apart. I, I argue that you see the cracks in season four and then you start see, noticing it more in five. And for me, six, the very beginning of six, when the Sand Snakes kill Tristan Martell, that's that's the moment. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it, it's almost like how bad can it get? Like, you thought season five was bad, and then it gets really bad. That's the mo- Season six is, for me, the moment. But, like, some people were saying season two is where it fell off. Like, yo, who are these oh, people? No. Are you serious? Whoa. Holy shit. No, I mean, I, I do know those purists. I do know the people that, like, seriously hated Talisa. Like, the Talisa plot. They're just like, what the hell is this? This makes no sense. And it is true that the Talisa plot, plot, like, logically speaking, doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, the actress that played Talisa was very Mm -hmm. good. The chemistry she had with the actor that played Rob Stark was very Mm -hmm. good. I believed their love. Um, And, you know, when when she dies at the Red Wedding... Uh, it's quite brutal, and I and I and I felt something as opposed to like, what do you really feel for Jane Westerling? Like you know, like she, you don't even remember what she's like. I mean, you kind of remember like the Jane Westerling from the Jamie chapters later, who's like, I love Rob, but like, what did you really feel for Jane Westerling pr- like before the Red Wedding? Mm-hmm. You know, nothing. You know, so so I don't know. You know, I, I understand. The, the criticism of, like, the season two Talisa stuff. And and um, I even understand, like, like the season one criticism was, like, what the hell is Theon doing with Roz? Like, what the he- where the hell is this plot going? This has nothing to do with anything. And it, that, that's all true, too. But um, nothing's perfect. And season one is... Season one, two, two and three are really good, you know? What I was saying before uh, is uh, in regards to maybe... Hopefully, it uh, this this Hedge Knight Duncan Egg thing being like six episodes is. So you've seen Sopranos, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen a few episodes. I've not seen all of Sopranos. No. So but, uh, I'm going to say the biggest like this is going to be sacrilege right here. This is going to be some heretical shit. I'm going to be saying here. Yeah. So I am not prepared for HBO in the early to mid 2000s back when it had. 13 episodes a season for things like i remember true blood having 13 episodes and feeling like okay this is too much some of this feels like filler bullshit i was not prepared for sopranos to have 13 fucking episodes so what i've decided to do was i'm only gonna watch the last three episodes because that's Mm. where things really go down i found a youtuber who does recaps of the entire seasons and i yeah I watch enough to where I'm on the last four to three episodes where things really kick off. Because from mm-hmm. what I've seen of yeah, season, that's... from what I've seen of most of Sopranos, a good chunk of it is just fucking and killing. It's just Goodfellas throughout, yeah, w- yeah. without like major uh, plot developments. Maybe sprinkle. I in. think a lot uh, there. There, are, there's a lot of stuff I think from Sopranos where people really love because because Sopranos is still very episodic, and so there's a lot of like individual episodes that that people talk about and individual scenes that people really talk about I, one of the few episodes of, of the sopranos i saw is um uh tony soprano's wife begins to have an affair and she has an affair with the principal of her son's school and you know it's it's a sweet little relationship and then things start falling apart a little and she doesn't know how to handle it. And she starts act. She starts like at the end, acting like Tony Soprano would. And so she's like, she they're, they're kind of breaking up. And she's like, she's like, you better watch your back, you know. Like, and she's getting like violent, like th- like physically threatening him, like gangster stuff. And he's like, whoa. And it's a very nice moment, and people and people kind of remember that episode in that moment. What what um, season is that? I have no idea. Great, because I, no I haven't gotten there yet. So. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think I think it's an irrelevant episode. Hey. Um, I mean, maybe I'm you know, it's just like there. But I so I think that's different from 
like Game of Thrones, you know, or where there's where it's all arc. It's all arc. There's no oh, yeah. episodes, you know. Um, there's no episodic stories, and and you know, so I think it depends what you're making. And so you know, it was a different time when there was like 13 episodes in a season. People could do that. People could like have fun little episodes in the middle. It, it's you know? it, like Sopranos for the most part is more of a character study about Tony and like all these other yeah. guys and like you know. Keep in mind that was. That was like Sex in the City Sopranos era of mm-hmm. HBO. Like Oz. no one, no one thinks of Sex in the City. Yeah, and Oz, no one thinks of Sex in the City as like arcs, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess there's like the Mr. Big arc, but like you know, no one, no one's thinking about about it in that sense. Like, ah, oh, I can only watch the last three episodes of Sex in the City. You're like, no, <laughs> like no, that's not the way it works. <laughs> the funny thing is, Sex but, in the City was so like. You could censor it to where it could appear on network TV, like uh, back then the WB, mm. and you know uh, uh, I'm pretty sure um, uh, AMC had it or something, or or, or TBS. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I bring up the Sopranos and it having 13 episodes in regards to Dunkin' Egg having maybe six or less is that in recent years we've gotten a lot of shows that have like less episodes per season, and I kind of like that. I'm being spoiled that on, on, on that a little mm. bit because that does mean less filler. And it does mean, like, less time. Because Sopranos are filled with a lot of scenes that often go nowhere. They're just there, I guess, to build character. But we don't need that much character building if it doesn't really amount to anything in the end. And a lot of it really doesn't. You just get to know the characters very well in Sopranos. A little little more so than you would otherwise in a normal television show or movie. Um, and I'm sure some people like that. Great. I think, you know, some of the scenes where uh, Tony is doing this and then it never comes up ever again. It's just to show how much more of an asshole he is, even though we already know that. Yeah. I think some of that is just kind of pointless and I don't really like those. That's just me. But, uh, no, I- I'm kind of getting spoiled on having very few episodes a season for something and every episode actually counting way more so than it would way back when, like, the early 2000s when we had, like, 13 episodes a season. It's one of the reasons I, I kind of don't like, I kind of didn't like watching The Walking Dead for the longest time because it was, like, what, 17 episodes a season? That's just, for me, that's just not necessary. And maybe I shouldn't say those, like, random scenes in Sopranos that don't really amount to anything are pointless, but I, I feel as though they're unnecessary, and and I'll leave it at that. But I'm, I'm, I'm so far, I am enjoying the series, and I do plan on watching the last season completely without just the last three episodes. And, um, funny you mentioned it earlier. So HBO released a slew of announcements today, so not only are we getting... Did you watch the movie The Batman with, with uh, Robert Pattinson? I, I did. fucking it's pretty loved good. It. I liked it. Oh, we're getting. I thought it was a really great movie. We're getting yeah. a penguin TV show. I don't know why the fuck that's even what, a thing. What? 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 what really? <laughs> with with Colin Farrell. Um, Colin Farrell. Yeah, as the penguin. Yeah, they just released the trailer. Where Where have you been all day? Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, he was great. He was great. It, it, that was one. That was one of those moments where you're like, why the hell did they even cast Colin Farrell like in makeup as this dude? And, I mean, he, he, he nailed it. But if you watch the trailer, it's just uh, Gotham Sopranos. Like, it's just Gotham Tony yeah. Soprano. Like, eh. I, f- I feel like there are more stories to tell. Maybe, I don't know, Catwoman? I don't know. You know me. I'm going to say anthology. You guys know me. Um, right, right. But it, but it all, but again, it's like this this world where, where when people give me something I didn't ask for and it turns out to be great because you had good writers, I'm still happy. Like, when I finished the Suicide Squad movie, and I really liked the Suicide Squad. The second movie. one? I really liked it. Yeah. I really liked it. But then at the end, they they, they tease a Peacemaker series. And I'm like, Peacemaker was the worst character in the entire movie. <laughs> um, you know, the, the, there were so many better characters that I would have wanted to see a, 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 a spinoff. And then I watched the Peacemaker series, and it was fantastic. I think I think I ranked it as like my second or third favorite series of the year. Like I thought it was great. Um, it was the same one we talked about, like Andor. I knew you were going like, to bring no this up. Andor, yeah. So so when 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 you say like oh there's going to be a Penguin like series, like I'm like no one asked for that. But at the same time, this world is so funny where things can surprise me. You know, I didn't want. I I thought the Peacemaker series was going to be horrible. It was great. I thought Andor was going to be horrible. It was great. 
HBO so, has more yeah. hits than it does misses. So you're, you're probably right. I'm probably just yeah. being an asshole here. I was actually looking forward to the Dune television series because I really like the, mm-hmm. like, the, um, uh, fuck, what's this, what's this kid's name? Timothy, uh, Sh- Chalamet? I was going to say Shamalala Bing Bong, but Chalamet is probably it. Um, I, I like the, the Timothy Shallowed Shala thing. I like that universe. I like the one... What's that asshole? It's not Jodorowsky. Who, what's the Dune? Who did Dune movie? Who did the Dune movie we watched that I really liked with Duncan Idaho? Who was that guy? Uh, Dennis Villeneuve. I like his Dune universe. And I wanted to see more of that universe. It's really cool. And they didn't announce anything like that. So I don't know if it's still ongoing. But we're getting the Penguin Show. We're getting <laughs> we're getting a series based on the Conjuring universe. Uh, all at HBO, by the way. We're getting a new spinoff from The Big Bang Theory. Uh, so oh, Jesus. I know. With young, Sh- young Sheldon at this point has got to be, like, as old as, like, normal Sheldon, like, original Sheldon. We're, we're getting uh, a young Sheldon spinoff. We're getting a It prequel series. Welcome what? to Derry. Uh, actually, it, you know what? It, does it take place, like, 100 years ago? I have no idea. Uh, it, it, all, all it says is the It prequel, Welcome to Derry. It doesn't say series, so I don't know if it's a movie or a show, but... W- HBO was just announcing literally, like, a thousand things. And we're also getting Rick and yeah. Morty, the anime... <laughs> are, are you talking like two crows shit no no <laughs> the fact that you know two crows uh we're getting a new true detective night country starting jody foster what it's like, yeah. oh my god that's gonna uh, jody really yep you where have you been today you've been gone i god. mean i i have been <laughs> my kid my kid was sick it's uh, <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, people are going to go nuts for that. Because yeah. first of all, Jodie Jody Foster like doesn't appear in that much these days. And the fact that she's like going back into a role which is so very similar to her Silence of the Lambs role. Oh, man. That's going to be that's going to be really that's going to be great. People are going to people are going to go nuts for that. But what I was going to ask you was, wasn't HBO on, like, the verge of bankruptcy or some shit? Like, where the fuck did they find all the money for this? Well, maybe they're just announcing everything um, at once. And also, we don't really know how long all of these things are. And some of them have different, different, like, cost levels, right? So, um, if I remember, because I watched... Uh, true detective like season one that's all about like hiring two actors and it's pretty small right it's pretty easy to film you can like film it in a few weeks right the whole thing um so i think you know so you have to look at each thing with cost like dunk and egg for example there's no dragons there's no cgi like yeah there's going to be a tournament and the, that tournament's gonna might, might be a little expensive you know but um you don't you don't have to worry about all the dragons and direwolves and all that. So like it's cheap. Like each little thing is you know you have to look each little thing at, at budget. You know. Um, True. And and if and if they don't cast someone like Henry Cavill as Sir Duncan, then like an, a re- right. relative unknown, they could save a lot of money. A lot of exactly, money. Exactly. Exactly. So it's mo- it's mostly about that. Um, which is why when people are when people are, like. There's been there. I think there's this debate online about whether House of the Dragon eight episodes was a good or bad thing. Because some people, so like, there's an argument that wait, but it comes with the with season three, so we're really getting sixteen episodes. And you're like, well, you probably would have gotten like a season three anyway. Like, <laughs> you know, it, 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 they're not they're not they're not like expanding out the story. It's still going to be a really rushed story. You know, they're gonna they're gonna. You know, you and I both kind of agree that the season two is going to end with with the taking of King's Landing. Um, while, you know, some people are like, oh, but the House of the Dragon it out that, uh, for House of the Dragon. Yeah, I, I actually I, taking... I don't know anymore with her. take. I think I, I was going to think that maybe it would have ended with the Battle of the, the Gullet. I don't know anymore. You think so? Um, hmm. Intent. You, well, think they, okay. you think they could get there in eight episodes? Mm. Well, I mean, look at look at season one and what they did with season one and how far how much territory they they dealt with there. Um, so the thing, if you end with the gullet, I kind of feel like you're having an entire season 
where Rhaenyra and Alicent aren't talking to each other. The show is about Rhaenyra and Alicent. How do you go an entire season without having Rhaenyra and Alicent having a scene together? And that doesn't happen until the 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 taking of King's Landing. You know, I, I kind of now, agree yes, with, I with with what you said in, in in your season two video about how you said four seasons. Season one introduces Rhaenyra. Season two season two is the fall is the rise of Rhaenyra. Season three, the fall, yeah. and season four is the epilogue season, right? Yeah, like the fall, the fall of Aegon and the epilogue, mm-hmm. or something like that. Either that, or you, you, you know, you can wrap that. You, if you don't want to do four, season four season, you do a really fast like, um, like summary of stuff. Like you know, you kill Rhaenyra off in the second to last episode, and then you you wrap everything up really quickly with like an epilogue ep- episode, which is kind of how Game of Thrones ended, right? You know that last episode was mostly epilogue, um, but I don't. I don't think. Like I think there was some talk about House of the Dragon ending at the Rook's Rest, and I'm just like, whoa! What What are you gonna do with the rest of the season if it's ending at Rook's Rest? You know, like there's just <laughs> there's gonna be nothing to fill the episodes with. So you kind of have to have Rook's Rest in the middle, and then do you have the Battle of the Gullet? Uh, which is pretty major, and then end season one the same way you ended season, or end season two the same way you ended season one. Like you know, that could that could make some narrative sense, but um, I think it's you know I think it makes more sense to have like the entire season build up to the 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 reuniting of Rhaenyra and Alicent, because um, you know because the show's about them. It's it's about them. Um, it does remind me of a uh, fuck. There's a show called Killing Eve where it's it's a it's about it's a cat and mouse where like one character is trying to catch the other. And that's the thing is they kept coming up with like contrived ways for the two characters to talk. And because because the show, like, how do you keep having these two characters that need to talk, like be separate for for how many episodes, you know? Um so I don't know. That's that, that's how I see it. Maybe I'm gonna be wrong. Maybe maybe they're gonna go an entire season without Rhaenyra and Allison talking, but or they'll invent a scene or something where there'll be a diplomatic moment between them or something. But I just don't see how they're gonna be able to get like all the battles and all the political intrigue and all like everything and and and, and Jace's uh, journey to. Uh, Winterfell and that plot line with Sarah Snow and then the dragon seeds which everyone seems to forget about like they're doing dragon seeds Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see how we're going to get that all in eight episodes maybe they could do it but remember House of the Dragon season one ten episodes that was like maybe two chapters not even of setup and and a lot of I mean a a lot of what we saw in House of the Dragon was original uh, I mean the 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 hunt was original, so that so like nine episodes of story. The Vayman stuff were, were was like from. one sentence. I remember I remember like there oh. being Valerian cousins who uh, got their tongues ripped out because you know uh, they they questioned Rhaenyra's legitimacy and uh, that's that's all that's all true. That's all. That was true. like a sentence, um, and, and it, was, it ended up being the best episode. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, let me let me let me let me look up. Um... So you're you're talking like forty five. Aemond, nope, up up. No, he gets sent to Storm's End. So up oh, the crowning, Jesus Christ, fifty pages. We're at fifty pages essentially. Mm-hmm. And how much is the entire dance? Oh, like two hundred something, right? Um. Well, we we're, we're going to do dance to to the taking of, of King's Landing, right? Which is, um, oh, that's right. I forget about Hour of the Wolf. That's definitely season four material, which is a shame because I kind of wanted Starks earlier. Hmm. Yeah. So it's like a good fifty pages is what they covered in House of the Dragon season one, and so then you know, uh, Pact of Ice and Fire. Um. Oh my God! This is actually all filled with like. Storm's End is is in the middle here, so like you gotta cut this out. That's like a good good amount of pages. I want to say they even covered covered like fifty five pages of material, and then, um. 
really like to get to Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra triumphant, they like split the chapter at this point in, in Fire and Blood. And I think that happens at Rick's Rest. I got some pictures. Um, is it another? It's about another 50 pages of material until Rhaenyra takes King's Landing. So like, it's about, yeah, it's about the same. I'd say it's a little, the amount of material that to like Rhaenyra taking King's Landing is a little, is a little shorter, I think. Um, but, um, yeah, it's about the same, about the same, about the same length, about the same length. So, um, I mean, you could try to slow it down, but I don't know. Well, regardless, uh, Hedge Knight, Sworn Sword, uh, we'll see. I, Like I said, I really want six episodes. I think that's the sweet spot. I'm also curious to see how they're going to do this because, you know, I know Star Wars does it, but it's Star Wars. Like, you can do prequel, original trilogy, and sequel era shit whenever, and no one bats an eye. Everybody knows where that stuff is, uh, is taking place. Game of Thrones... I'm okay with, you know, certain series like this being a thing, but the problem I'm having is, are we really going to do a prequel set 200 years before a Game of Thrones and then another one concurrent 100 years before Game of Thrones? Sword, uh, Hedge of Night is a standalone story to where it could, f like, be okay being mm. aired and, like, during House of the Dragon, but I think it would confuse people. Because you clearly know in Star Wars when you're in the original trilogy era with Stormtrooper and TIE Fighter designs versus, you know, sequel era and prequel era. With House yeah. of the Dragon, Game of Thrones stuff, kinda? Uh, not really, kinda. And I know some people are going to get on my case for, you know, like worrying about what casuals think. But you have to remember, we're in the tyranny of the casual here. The casual viewership versus, like, hardcore fans who have read the books is... Not even close. I would argue that casuals are more than 80% of the viewer base. And if they're confused or whatever the fuck, they won't come back. I Do you know how many people I've seen complain about the timeline differences in House of the Dragon Season 1 and completely drop the show after the first time skip from Episode 5 to 6? Yeah, this is stuff that you do have to worry about because it is a thing that people clearly care about. And if you're wondering why should we care about what casuals like, because once again, they are a majority of the viewership. If they're not tuning in, we're not getting more seasons or more spinoffs. They are the bulk of what HBO looks at for numbers. Hardcore fans just don't add up for the numbers that would be profitable for HBO to continue this. Hardcore fans, I would argue, make up more than 80% of the viewership. And if that viewership isn't there, then it's just not profitable to continue making the show. Right. I mean, they could pull the same thing. I mean, with House of the Dragon, they began with that whole, like, this many years before Daenerys, like, beginning. Right? So, the problem here is there's a bit of a, sp I mean, there's a bit of a spoiler in the sense that the, that the dragons all die in the dance. Um, which, when it comes to, like, the hedge knight, you know, but, um, you know, that the dragon's being dead. But, you you uh, probably don't know this, but during to... Celebration, they released an actual timeline of when Star Wars series take place. So we, we spoke about it briefly with Trey. So because they're releasing mm. three movies set at three different times, Dawn of the Jedi, which takes place like 5,000 years before A New Hope, and then the Mando finale movie, which takes place after Return of the Jedi, and then the Rey movie, which is a sequel series thing, they have like an actual timeline that shows you where everything takes place. If HBO actually did that with Ice and Fire, I think it'd be fine. I think it'd be better. But I think casual fans might be a little confused. Maybe I'm jumping the gun here because they just announced it today. Um, and maybe it yeah. might air at the very end of House of the Dragon. So they have something like in preparation just in case the series House of the Dragon goes on a little too long or maybe a little less and they have something right there. I was hoping it would go like House of the Dragon one year, spin off another year, House of the Dragon comes back, spin off the next year after that. Kind of like with, you know, Disney's doing with Star Wars. And I was wondering when was House of the Dragon announced? And I'm kind of a little let down because I was wondering if House of the Dragon was announced in 2020 and then it took two years for it to release. It was actually announced 
in October of 2019. Wow. The same year, like months after season eight ended. Wow. It took almost okay. three years for House of the Dragon to like come to fruition on, on HBO. So we'll probably end up seeing this maybe summer of 2026, 20, which is crazy to think about. So you're saying it might even be after, like this is all the preparation for after season three of of House of the Dragon. Unless they steamroll this bitch straight to like six, four episodes, like you said, right. easily done. But yeah, I think. But I think you're right. I mean, because because if uh, if House of the Dragon is not going to premiere until 2024, like even if they, you know they just greenlit it now, they've got to write scripts, they got to do pre-production, like. Um, Actually, no, they greenlit yeah, season two before season one came out. But they they just now started pre uh, like they were in pre-production for the longest time. They just now started production. They, yeah, they just started filming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So. Man, do you think they're? Well, it's the real question is if they're if they're going to be filming seasons two and three back to back. I don't even think they are, but um, they should. They should, but I don't know if they will. But um, the uh, so it's twenty twenty four. That means, you know, if you're talking like a two year gap in between seasons, um, or a year and a half gap at least between seasons, so you, we wouldn't get. We wouldn't get season three of House of the Dragon until, you know, at earliest late 2025, right? Maybe, yeah. And then, but probably 2026. And so, unfortunately, that would be like the sweet spot to... to re- that would be when you'd think that, that um, it would be coming out. So I think maybe they'll delay season three of House of the Dragon a little bit so that they can pop in... Dunk an egg in between? Yeah, but that would be so confusing. Like, hey, weren't we just... Fo- Didn't Rhaenyra just take King's Landing? What's this? What's going on? That yeah, would be yeah. so confusing for casual fans. Like, the, well, to be fair, you know, we're here to I explain I mean, they did it, it with... They did it with, um... With Better Call Saul, right? Then, did then they? they released the... They released the, the Jesse movie... In the middle of Better Call Saul. Well, we we all know Better Call Saul is a prequel. It was that was very well established, and you're right. And we all know the El Camino was going to be a, a sequel to the whole thing, so that was well established. But like with House of the Dragon, well, Game of Thrones, I don't, I don't know. Like fans know where everything takes place in Star Wars. Do fans know where everything? Like casuals know where everything takes place? Because and, and let's be honest about this: Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, and the El Camino movie. There's like five characters. Like, there's not a lot of like. There's like it's, it's what Comic Book Girl 19 said in her in her video. You know, there's like three Viserys and like you know two Aegons and like there's so much confusion going on. Versus in like Breaking Bad, it's like Saul, Gus, Walter, Jesse, Mike, and that's like ba- and Lalo, and that's like it. Like, there's really not much to like you know. Yeah, it's yeah, not much yeah. to think about there. With House of the Dragon, there's like a whole era. I don't know, maybe I'm giving casual fans not enough credit, and maybe people are smarter than that, but at the same time, I'm just worried. Um, one last thing I'll say before I, I wrap this up with you, because I know I've kept you a little too long. Um, so it, it was announced that George is writing, and he's executive producer, which mm-hmm. I really hope... Of course. Did you see my tweet? Um, I did not see a tweet. I'm going to read it right you now. You should hesitate to get on. I, I Actually, you know what? It's been almost 24 hours because we have because you haven't seen Mando yet, so I don't want you to get spoiled. But um, look at my tweet. It, it'll it'll pretty pretty much sum up what I'm trying to say. Okay. Read it out loud if you can. <laughs> um. Oh, sweet. We're getting yet another prequel, but another reason for George to put off writing Winds of Winter. Well, yes. Yeah. Of course. Mm. Yeah. No, no, it, 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 it's it's another nail in the coffin. Do you think it's another yeah. nail in the coffin? How many nails oh, yeah, is that? <laughs> it's quite a few, quite a few. Every birthday since Dance of Dragons was was one nail. Every birthday, every movie, every yeah. writing credit, every like other like a uh, project from a friend of his that he wants to do. <laughs> yeah. Every wild cards blog post. <laughs> Every every football game, every Giants <laughs> Jets game. Yeah. There's so many nails. 
<sighs> Preston, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, well, thank you. As always, guys, we'll see you all next time. Have a good one.